Okay, before I start today's MU64 setup guide, make sure to hit notification, subscribe and like if you liked today's video. It really helps my channel out a great deal. Plus, it gets you up-to-date emulation content, especially for Commodore 64. And if you check out my micro emulation playlist, you will find lots of Commodore 64 content in there. I've also got a dedicated modern C64 playlist too. I'm a big Commodore 64 fan, and if it wasn't for generalized emulation, I swear I'd be doing a Commodore 64 channel. So we're looking at MU64, and to be honest, this is a fairly new emulator to me, but as always, when I find something new, Commodore related, I do a video on it just to get it out there a little bit. So what we're going to do is head over to the website for this. Now the website appears to be in German but you can use a translator and what we are going to do here is go to the MU64 version which is the latest uh, 5.1.0 and if we just download this we got download Windows version below. So we've got Times32 and Times64. Now, if you're wondering which version to go for, this is asking you what type of computer you're running. To find this out, go to your search bar and type in system information. If you go to system information, you'll find under system type, the type of computer you've got. So in my case, as we can see, I've got a Times64 base PC. Therefore, I'm gonna download the Times64 version. So we're going to download the version you're needing and once you've done this you're going to get yourself a folder. So this is known as a portable emulator. We don't need to install it, everything is self-contained within a folder which is obviously on my desktop. Now inside this folder you're going to find ROMs. Now this isn't anything to do with games. ROMs is your kernel and it's pretty much your Commodore 64 operating systems as well as the 1541 drive that it emulates. Now obviously this needed firmware too. So this isn't game related at all. This is literally just firmware and kernel firmware, whatever. So what we're gonna do inside of this folder is drag some games in. So I've got three separate folders that I've created, each one containing a different file extension so first of all i'm going to drag these in and i'm going to explain to you what these file extensions are so we got the disk folder inside of my disk folder we got darkfusion.d64 now d64s are floppy disk images and they're fairly relatively quick if we come out of here We've then got the cartridge folder, and cartridges for C64 emulation is known as .crt. Now obviously cartridge are the easiest and probably the most quickest way to load Commodore 64 games, even in real C64 hardware through its expansion port. It's automatically loading within seconds. And if we come out, we've got the tape folder. And in tape folder, I've got the game Black Thunder, which is known as a .t64. So there's many different file extension types for Commodore 64 emulation, but I've just chosen three of the most typical ones. So now we know what we're doing with file extensions, what we're gonna do next is open up the emulator. So we got mu64.exe. If we double left click on this one, Cool. So we got two screens here to look at. We got the main C64 screen and we got this little GUI here, graphical user interface. So the first thing we're going to see is 8, 9, 10, 11. So if you're new to C64 or you've never owned a disk drive, 8, 9, 10, 11 means different disk drives. So say for example, we got four disk drives attached being emulated. So what we're going to do first is actually load up a disk game since we're on this one first. So to load up a disk game, I'm going to just eject the disk image I've already got inserted. So what we're going to do to load a game is just left click on the floppy disk image. And then from here, you can navigate to where your games are located. So if you're not sure how to find them and they're on your desktop like they are on mine, we're just going to press the home button just there, or rather the home picture desktop and then go to your MU64 folder and find your disk folder and here it is darkfusion.d64 and beside it you can find the contents of that disk image so i want to load the dark fusion plus because that's the name of the game and that's the program on the disk i need to load so i'm going to double left click and i can now close this down and of course this is also emulating floppy disk drive sounds 
If we come out with here a sec and look it back in the main folder, we got a folder here called Floppy Sounds. And this is different sounds that can be generated from this emulator emulating the sounds of the floppy disk drive mechanism. So here it is. We've now loaded our game. Now, let me just remind you that some Commodore 64 games might have coupled to a few different disks per game. This is why we've got four disk drives here to emulate. For example, if this game now, Dark Fusion, asked me to insert, I don't know, disk two, then I would go and select the picture just here on the nine drive and then just insert disk two. It's that simple. So as it stands, I've got a controller inserted. I've got an Xbox controller, but I can't use it. It won't respond too well. It's just responded, but I'm gonna show you how to set this up. What we're gonna do is go back to the GUI just here, and we're gonna to go to settings. From settings, we're gonna to go to MU64 settings, and then we're gonna find controls on the end. Now we've got two ports here. Now there's two ports on a Commodore 64, on any Commodore 64 model, but generally it's port two that works with Commodore 64 games. So what we're gonna do is go to the learn button, and then it's going to bring up this up, down, left, and right in action button in the middle. Now, if I press up on my D-pad, and then do what it says, it's highlighting downwards. I'm going to press down on my D-pad, left on my D-pad, right on my D-pad, and the middle, the round circle, that indicates it's action button, your fire button. I'm going to press A on my Xbox controller, and that's now set up. Now, if we go back to the game, I'm going to use my keyboard on my laptop to control this. So this is obviously a cracked version. I'm going to press N on my keyboard. And as we can see, unlimited lives now flashes N for no. And again, and again, and again, and again. Now, say we want a full screen on this, I'm not gonna do it now, but all you need to do is press Alt on your keyboard and enter together, and that's gonna bring you into full screen. But I'm gonna just maximize this for now. Okay then, so you can pretty much see how the concept of loading discs work. So next up, we're gonna load a cassette tape. So these are also known as .t64s or .taps or something to that effect. So again, what we're gonna do to load is just hover over where the little data set is, 1530, just left click on it. And then again, we need to find the directory of where your cassette tape images are stored. So once we find your games on cassette, we just need to type in a command. So I'm gonna type in load. And I'm gonna press enter on my keyboard. It says press play on tape, just like a real C64 would. And just above here, we got play, rewind, fast forward, stop, just like a real data set would. So I'm gonna press play. And this is then gonna load the game into the emulator. So like I've been saying, uh, tape images.taps.t64 is by far they're the slowest you'll get in terms of loading your games. And if you really want to, there's a little volume sound at the side just here. If we left click on this, we can hear what the data set is doing. And as we can see, searching has found the game and the data set has stopped. If I press space, So while this is loading, what we're gonna do is go back here to the GUI where we can look at our settings. If I just go to settings and go to video CRT settings, we can change the look of the screen. For example, if I scroll saturation to zero, it's gonna give us black and white. And if I go back up to 100, it's gonna be very bright and vibrant. So I'm gonna stick in the middle of this one. We also got brightness. And again, that's gonna lower the tone of the brightness. And we've got contrast. So all of these slides just here are all going to correspond to how your game presents itself. And also we got horizontal blur. So if you want a little bit more retro, like you're using a real CRT, we can then blur it. And we also got UV just here. So if we mix this horizontal blur up with horizontal blur, uh, you know, you get the picture. There's lots of different options here we can do to mess around with video settings. And we also got scan lines. So we can go to zero and we can slide this up to 100. So lots there, like I've been saying, to mess around with. And if I go into settings and I go to MU64 settings, 
From here, under emulation, I can even take a look at changing the sound of the SID chip. So if I check to SID, so we got two variations of the SID chip here, the MOS6581 and the MOS8580. So personally, I'll stick with this on default 8580, but if you're a real SID fan, then you might find 6581 MOS is a little bit better for you. And if I also go here, we can change around SID settings there as well. So there's lots of sound settings to play around with in MU64. Under graphics, we got a few different things to play around with. So we got double texture size, uh, video CRT output, enable filter. There's lots there to play with. And if you want the correct aspect ratio of four by three, just check on aspect ratio four by three. Okay, and finally, as we can see, this is gonna take a considerable amount of time to load up. So what I'm gonna do is just stop the cassette and I'm gonna close out of here. And just before it loaded up a cartridge image, if we go to the reset at the top, we got two options there, soft reset or hard reset. So instead of closing everything down and start from scratch, we can do it here. Now, soft reset won't wipe away all the data from the memory. If you go to hard reset, that's gonna wipe everything clean. And now we can see we got no scan lines because I've been playing about with video settings. So to load a cartridge, what we're gonna do is just highlight, attach a cartridge, and then I'm gonna select my cartridge here. And there we go, Dark 118. I know I used to play this one a hell of a lot when I was little. Good game. Okay, and on MU64, we've also really easily got a function where we can uh, capture gameplay images. So if we just play a game or you want to take a picture of your programming data that you're working on, just literally left click on screenshot and you'll see a flash in that sense saved into your directory, your images. And something else really cool I like about this emulator is that if we go to tools, so we can even load in a RAM expansion unit file. So there's particular games on Commodore 64, uh, most notably recently Sonic the Hedgehog game, that requires a REU or a RAM expansion unit. If we go to insert REU, now I don't have the file, but if you do have the file for this, then that's gonna pretty much turn this into a C64 emulator with a REU attached to it. And you're gonna be able to load those games which requires more RAM. So that's it for the MU64 setup guide today. I tried covering everything as possible, all the functions which is included with this emulator. Now, like I said at the start of the video, I cover a lot of Commodore 64 content on my channel, and I'm pretty sure MU64 goes pretty high up there alongside other emulators such as Vice and CCS64. It's a fairly good emulator. And whilst I'm thinking of it, I also got asked the other day to upload a video for a Commodore 64 simulator so check that out in my recently released videos it's pretty impressive anyways if you like what you see today hit notification subscribe and like and also join me on social media i'm on facebook instagram twitter and tiktok but until next time stay retro